Jesus is a lion and he's being depicted as a house cat. You know, it's like yeah. we've softened it and it's, it, you can't like stop it. Hey, hey, I don't operate off what y'all think I'm supposed to be doing. <laughs> no, no. I trust God. <laughs> And it's gon' stay like that. I take pride in the what God got going. Slip down artists, wake them up to a yawn. I run with a king, so this prince got a charm. If they tell you any difference, it was just a false alarm. I'll show you why I've been and I'ma tell you where I'm going. And you probably ain't invited you. What's going on, man? <sighs> so much. So much yeah. is going on. You know. How you yeah. been? Uh really well. How about you? You know, I've been I've been good. I've been bad. I've been a little bit everywhere. Yeah, I guess I'll just be honest. I'm not gonna lie to nobody. Yeah, it's been a rough couple of days. Yeah. Spiritually. Hey, I just feel I feel down. I don't know what it is. It's it's been better the second part of today though. Yeah. I think after yeah. you you guys prayed for me, I think that's when I started feeling better. Sweet. That's cool. Mm-hmm. We felt uh we actually all of us prayed for you, Benjamin, Simeon. That's so, so we cool. all took our turn. It was uh, it was powerful. So I'm happy to hear that uh, it affected you. I appreciate that. Yeah, it really did. Good, man. There's power in prayer, that's for sure. I've been feeling no that doubt. lately. No doubt, no doubt. Um, so tonight, yeah, we're going to be talking about the beautiful topic of the fear of God. Mm-hmm. What it's about. Why it's yeah. about. Mm-hmm. And we're going to be looking at some Bible verses that talk about it, explain it. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's something that I feel like a lot of people don't, don't really understand it. They don't really grasp it. Um, but yeah, you got anything you want to say before we hop into it? Yeah, I agree. Um, I don't know what your notes are about. We don't know each other's notes right now. So I hope that what I'm about to say doesn't contradict what you're going to say. Um, (laughs) but, um, I will say that for the longest time, I just, I had heard and I thought when I heard the fear of the Lord or the fear of God, I thought it was just respecting God. I thought it was just like a a deep reverence or respect for God in which it is like, that is part of it, (laughs) but there's, it's a lot (laughs) deeper than that. Yeah. So I think I'd always just been taught, oh, just, it just means respect. The fear of the Lord is the respect of the Lord. Um, and that's just a very small portion of it. Yeah. I feel like that's a, that's like a very baseline way of explaining it Mm -hmm. because it is, um, but there's definitely more to it. Mm -hmm. Um, I know on my side here, a lot of times people tend to, to think like, well, God calls us not to be afraid, but then he wants us to be afraid of him. Yeah. I'm like, no, he, he doesn't want you to be afraid of him. He wants you to have a fear for him. And they're like, yeah. that's the same thing. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a little bit confusing, I think, especially for the new believer or somebody who's not um, just dove into it. Even, yeah. even if you're not a new believer, you could be 5, 10, 15, 20 years into your walk, and you could still hear that and be like, yeah, that doesn't make total sense to me. Um, I mean, there's verses in the Bible like in... I think it's Second Timothy one seven. I've got that in my notes. I didn't write down the actual scripture what it says though, but I'm pretty sure it says. I think that's the one where it says he doesn't give us a spirit of fear, um, but a sound mind. I'll just look mm-hmm. it up really quick because I want to make sure that that's actually what I'm looking for. So Second Timothy one seven. If this is it, um, it talks about how um, God doesn't give us a spirit of fear, but instead he gives us uh, something about a sound mind. Um, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. I hate saying um so many times. <laughs> you do say it a lot. I do. But that's okay. It makes you who you are. I can't tell you how many times I've deleted voice notes to you because, <laughs> like, even prayers that I send over because I said um like four million times. No okay, way. yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this is it. Second Timothy 1, 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, um, but of power and love and of a sound mind. Um, so I think, you know, when people hear the fear of the Lord, it's like, but he doesn't give us a spirit of fear. Like, what is that talking about? Um, so I think it's important that we dive into this topic fairly. Um, I wouldn't say it's really, really deep, but it'll give people a better understanding of what the fear of the Lord is and why it's important. Yeah. Um, because I, I would say 
that it is one of the most important things um, in our Christian walk. I would say it's probably, it may even be the most important thing in our Christian walk. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm. <laughs> so. Yeah. You, you can't really be who we're called to be as followers of Christ mm-hmm. without that healthy fear, you know? Yeah. I think it's, I think it's the key that everybody's, uh, that a lot of people can be missing. Like you could be walking through your walk with Jesus. And if you don't have that, you're missing out on so much. So this could really be a key that really helps a lot of people break through to the next level with their walk, um, in both their relationship with Jesus and their calling in the earth. So, yeah. So enough with the cliffhanger. Mm -hmm. We'll hop right into it. Um, so essentially the first thing that I have written here, just like in trying to understand what the fear of the Lord is. Um, in Proverbs 2, verse 5, I'm just going to read it here. So I'm just going to read Proverbs 2, starting in okay. 1. Yeah. Uh, chapter 1. Or sorry, start not starting in chapter 1. That'd be a little bit because I'm a slow reader. But starting in verse 1, rather. So it says, My son, if you accept my words and store up my commands within you, turning your ear to wisdom and applying your heart to understanding... Indeed, if you call out for insight and cry aloud for understanding, and if you look for it as silver and search for it as hidden treasure, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Mm. So basically summing that up, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of the knowledge of him. Yeah. You know, and the fear, the fear of the Lord is essentially one of, if not the key aspect to an intimate relationship with God. Absolutely. Yeah. And and of course that's what he calls us to, you know? Yeah. I I don't believe that we can fully know him um, or know anything for that matter without the fear of the Lord, because Mm -hmm. that's, that's the beginning of knowledge, just like that verse says. So to, to know anything at all, whether about him or about life or about his word, we have to start with a fear of the Lord. Yeah. And I think, I think just before we, we dive into anything else. Mm-hmm. Um, understanding the difference between being scared of God and having a fear of the Lord. Um, so in uh, one of the things I wrote down here that I found super interesting was in Exodus 19, um, when it talks about God delivering the Israelites out of Egypt. Dude, yes. I'm glad you're going point. here. This is no, you didn't. But this is my the Exodus twenty twenty is my favorite verse in the Bible. Cool. So, yeah. go. <laughs> so that's, that's perfect so cool. because basically it talks about like how God delivered the Israelites out of Egypt to bring to bring them to Himself, to mm-hmm. bring them into an intimate relationship with Him. So in the story, on the third day, God comes to the Israelites, and they're scared of Him. They're scared. They're terrified. So they just say to Moses, like, "How about you talk to God?" And then come tell us what to do. We'll do it, but we just don't want, like, we don't want that. You be the, you be the middleman, essentially. Yeah. <clears throat> so I'm actually going to go, I'm going to hop over and read it real quick. Thank you. Oh my gosh. I'm so happy you did this. This is legit. As soon as, you know what? I think that I adopt this as my favorite verse whenever we read Scary God. I think it's in Maddie's book. I think he talks about this. Yeah. Oh, shameless plug. Go read Scary God. I've I've gone through it twice at this point. Yeah. Um, and I, I feel like I'm going to go through it again after this. It helps so much with understanding it better. Well, this can be like a surface level of getting like diving into the fear of the Lord um, and to understand it better. But you go read that book and it makes it so clear. Like it is it is one of the best, one of the most well-written books I've ever read. It's oh, really yeah. good. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I'm just going to read that part. So it's Exodus 20, 20. Yeah. Um, so Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. God has come to test you so that the fear of God will be with you to keep you from sinning. So that sounds super contradictory to anybody who's like, don't be afraid, but I'm going to check to see that the fear is there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So basically in the statement, Moses, he's basically contrasting the difference between being afraid of God and having Mm -hmm. the fear of the Lord. Yeah. So what I, what I took down, like what I wrote down here in my notes, being scared of God, it comes from a place of having something to hide. So 
an example of that. I'll hop right over there. In Genesis 3, verse 8. Dude, you are flowing. I knew you were going there next. This is great. You're doing awesome. Bro. <laughs> going. I'm loving this. <laughs> Bro, it's it's so clear. Like, it's so easy to see Yeah. once you put all, like, you connect the dots. You know what I mean? For sure. Um, But in Genesis 3, verse 8, it says, Then the man and his wife, talking about Adam and Eve, heard the sound of the Lord as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to man, to the man, where are you? He answered, uh, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked. So I hid. So that's, that's right. There is an example of having something to hide. Mm-hmm. You're afraid you're, you're trying to hide your sin. So you're afraid of God, Yeah, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but on the other hand, the fear of the Lord is that you don't have anything to hide, but you're just terrified of being away from him. Yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So it contrasts the two perfectly there. That's incredible. That that helps so much. Um, so going to Exodus, let's start in, um, yeah, let's just do 20. Um, yeah, let's do 20, and I'm going to read 21 also, and then I'm going to bring the New Testament into this, or just the New Covenant. Um So verse 20, I'm going to read this again, even though you just read it. Uh, Moses said to the people, do not fear, for God has come to test you, that the fear of him may be before you, that you may not sin. Verse 21 says, the people stood far off while Moses drew near to the thick darkness where God was. The thing is, so when you were deciphering between both fear, like scared of, and then just having the actual fear of the Lord, being scared of is when you have something to hide. Here's what happens, though. Um, the reason that, that people were scared is because the presence of God was there. Because if you look in twenty in verse 21, the people stood far off while Moses drew near to the thick darkness where God was. When God shows up, he shines a light right on your sin, right? And so in the Old Covenant, a lot of people um, had no um, degree or understanding of how God was also full of grace. They would just see the presence of God or they would be faced with the presence of God and be in total fear because they had no understanding of what it was, right? Yeah. And so in the new covenant, we understand that through through Jesus, there's grace. And so we know that there is nothing to hide because everything's been exposed. God knows us inside and out. He knows everything mm-hmm. about us and he chooses to love us still. So that's why we can you know, enter his presence and approach his throne, um, with grace, um, with boldness uh, into his throne of grace, because we understand that he knows everything about us. So there's nothing to hold back and there's nothing to, um, be afraid of because he sees it and he still chooses to show us grace. So I think the most incredible part about this is in verse 21, where then Moses drew, uh, into the darkness where God was, he drew near into that thick darkness if you fully just embrace the presence of God, move into it, the fear of the Lord actually, like in verse 20, it'll cause you not to sin. Um, no will never be sinless, but the desire to sin will actually melt away mm-hmm. where all we care about is being in the presence of God. Um, and the fear of the Lord actually causes us to not desire to sin, but instead desire to be in his presence always. Yeah. You know, yeah, and we're still we're still of sinful nature. Like, we're still born into a sinful world. Yeah, but when you die, when you give your life to Christ, the old is dead. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So yeah, yeah, it, it, yeah. As you build that intimacy with God, and if you understand that you can't have an intimacy with God without having that healthy understanding, that's where it it all it all like pieces together. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, absolutely. No yeah. way. Yeah, it froze for a second, but I think hopefully picked okay. everything up. Yeah. We're back. You're I'm, good. Okay, FYI, we've been having some technical issues. Well, it's yeah. not our technical issue. No, um, it ain't us. <laughs> a couple times you paused and you froze, but then it like sped you up, so I think we'll be good. That's what it did but, to you uh, too. I'm as sure. As long as fine. Yeah, as long as people are hearing what has to be said, then that's all yeah. that matters. 
No doubt. So to finish up this Exodus 20 and 21, um, basically a healthy fear of the Lord um, brings about um, intimacy with him to where all we want and desire is him and we no longer want or desire sin. So mm. we are born um, into sin. We have a sinful nature. Um, however, um, God's grace actually leads us, his, his love and his grace leads us to repentance, um, his goodness. Um, and so even though our sin is exposed, we have nothing to hide. And all we want to do is just love him because despite of our sin, he chooses to show us grace and invite us closer to him. So um, keep going. What else do you have on yours? Um, I actually have, uh, it was just a little, I was listening to, um, a podcast that John Bevere was doing. Mm -hmm. Um, and there was actually a, a piece that, that jumped out to me and it was regarding how passionate, how passionate God is towards having an intimate relationship with us. And he had explained it in the sense of like, for him and his wife, like the amount of times he would think about his wife within say a certain period of time, like within the 15 or 20 years, 40 years, whatever, the, how long they've been married mm -hmm. in the Bible. It says that paraphrasing that the, the thoughts that God has for us and not us as a collective, but us individually outnumbers the number of grains of sand on the earth. So that's a lot of thoughts, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that is. <laughs> and it's a whole lot. <laughs> and like he said, he's like, I love my wife. I had so many thoughts about my wife throughout these years that if I were to have a grain of sand for every thought, I probably couldn't even fill like mm -hmm. a shoebox. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And that's so good. he went to, he went on to explain like, that's how, that's how passionate God is about having an intimate relationship with us. He's constantly thinking about us. And so for us to meet him in that intimate relationship, it has to start in a place of fear. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And not in a place of being scared, but yeah. you can't, you can't love somebody. You can't have an intimate relationship with God if you're scared of him, you know? Right. Yeah. So I thought that was really cool. <clears throat> yeah. That is, now you said his name is John Bevere. Is that right? Yeah. He wrote, he wrote Who one of that? the, he wrote one of the bigger books going around. Um, don't quote me on it, but maybe love languages, the five love languages. Oh, that's him. Yeah. The five love languages. It's a great book. I, I know it's a great book. Give me two seconds. I forgot. I didn't realize that was him. See, and I would hate to be in a place of, not speaking the truth so probably not even that book <laughs> uh, that was john divier not uh, dang it okay um <laughs> you okay. may have to look it up <laughs> no so it wasn't uh <laughs> It wasn't that one. It may be that one, but okay. there, the book that I was thinking of is um, Driven by Eternity. Oh, never even heard of never that. Heard of it. Mm -hmm. He also has a book called The Fear of the Lord. Well, there uh, you go. And he also has a book called The Bait of Satan and Drawing Near. I feel like I'm plugging this guy right now. <laughs> well, great titles. But yeah, he's... Compelling. He's, he's incredible. He uh, He definitely spends a lot of time reading his word, seeking God. And he's a pastor? Yeah. Is he in the States or is he in Canada? He's not. I, I believe he's in the States. Cool. Um, yeah, it was actually one thing that, just brief side note, he actually talked about, um, about the Sabbath and how if the Sabbath was, like a lot of times people will get caught up in ministry and they spend all their time doing, doing, doing because they just want to pull people into the kingdom and, and just continue doing God's work. Um, but he said, like, if God said it, that means there's importance to it. So mm. if God said to rest and Jesus rested and Jesus took people away from work 
or from what they were doing to go and eat or to go and rest. That's something that like we need to understand, you know, and it was really yeah. cool because so many times like he was he was doing a podcast with another pastor and he took him out to play golf and he was like, it's, it's just so weird for me to think that this is what God calls me to do, <laughs> you know, <laughs> bro, I Sabbath every day. <laughs> See, I think that's an unhealthy. Uh... <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> no, Sabbath away, bro. Um. Well, yeah, you got you have anything? I mean, you had a lot of notes. What do you want to go to next? Um. No, man. I I was just like one one thing that I I came across was a certain word that I didn't really understand. Um. And the word is venerate. Oh yeah, yeah. He was saying that. Um. So it it says like we fear God, we venerate Him, and venerate means to appreciate, respect, glorify. To be in awe of God more than mm. anything or anyone else. Yeah, yeah. And like, I feel like that pretty much sums it up. Yeah, that's good. I um so earlier today, um, I decided just to listen to a teaching on the fear of the Lord, just because we we're going to be talking about it. Um, and um, I've studied this before, um, but I just wanted to listen to, maybe it wasn't safe right before the podcast to listen to just another perspective. Um, but it's a, it was a trusted source. So I listened to Derek Prince. Um, I haven't listened to him a lot, but uh, the stuff that I have listened to, um, pretty good. I don't know if you've heard of him before. He's an older guy. He's probably passed away now. Um, don't know a whole lot about him as far as like life and ministry and stuff like that, but I know he was a pastor, um, and has lots of, um, like material and stuff on like deliverance ministry, spiritual warfare. Um, I guess he's got some on the fear of the Lord. So pretty well-rounded guy. Um, but he, he opened up right from the top saying that the fear of the Lord is actually treasure. I'm like, okay. He says it's the Lord's treasure. So he referenced Isaiah 33, six, and it says, and he will be the stability of your times, abundance of, of salvation, wisdom and knowledge, the fear of the Lord is Zion's treasure. Thought, okay, okay, hmm. that's pretty cool. Um, then he moves on to say that the fear of the Lord is not a natural fear. Um, and when he said it's not a natural fear, he said um, kind of like getting in a car wreck. So the fear that you experience, like, you know, of like, I don't know if you're like in a a near like car wreck experience, like just being <laughs> scared and swerving. So I've had a few of those. Um, <laughs> um, it's not a natural fear like that. It's also not de demonic fear, um, uh, like tormenting. Um, and it's also not the fear of man. Um, sometimes it's a physical fear. Like there are instances in life and I've heard testimonies even in like the, the scary God book by Maddie Montgomery. Um, and I've heard personal testimony, but testimonies by some people who've said that they've experienced the fear of the Lord before physically, um, it can be like that in some instances. Um, but, um, he said that it's even, uh, it's, it's a, it's a spiritual thing more than it's always physical. Um, and then he goes on to say that there were seven spirits of God that marked Jesus. So in Isaiah, uh, when he was prophesying about the coming of the Messiah, he said that there, uh, basically Isaiah said that there's seven spirits that will rest upon that Messiah who is Jesus. Um, and so in Isaiah 11, two, um, it says, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, um, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Um, so basically, um, those were the seven marks that, that mark Jesus. So Jesus actually had the fear of the Lord. And so if he was our perfect model, that w then we need to learn, you know, what those spirits are and especially the fear of the Lord. Mm -hmm. um, so the marks of someone who receives the spirit of the fear of the Lord are, um, let's see, Psalm 34, 11, come, O children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Um, verse 12, um, what man is. What man is there who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep the tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Turn away from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Um, so there's there's actually marks of that rest upon someone who actually has the fear of the Lord, and it's someone who do, who keeps their tongue from evil, 
um, and who keeps their lips from speaking deceit and they turn away from evil and do good and they seek peace and pursue it. So someone who has the fear of the Lord basically wants nothing to do with what the enemy offers or what the world offers. They want everything to do with what Christ offers. Yeah. Um, so I, um, I mean, when we started out with Exodus 20, um, Exodus 2020, that was where I really wanted to lead the whole episode into that, which is crazy that you brought that up first. When I first heard that, it, um, it honestly, because I had never, up until I probably read Scary God, I don't think I understood the fear of the Lord at all. I think I just only understood it as respect for the Lord. And so yeah. when I saw that um, the fear of the Lord causes you not to sin, it changed everything in my mind. I'm like, oh my goodness. Like, I think, you know, every day there's always something that I feel disappointed about, um, that I not, not like I'm discouraged or I'm, I'm mad at myself or anything like that, but I can look over the day and say, man, I wish I would have done this different, or I wish I would have went this direction instead of this way. And, um, I really believe that a, a healthy fear of the Lord, um, you don't necessarily feel like you're not going to beat yourself up at the end of the day. Um, because you understand, like you were saying in Genesis where you have nothing to hide. I don't feel like you'll have anything to hide. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Everything's out in the light because God exposes it. Um, and instead, if we can, um, walk in the fear of the Lord, I would say that it gives us the confidence to walk, um, rightly in his sight, but also to do what he's called us to do day in and day out, despite of us falling short or anything like that. So... Yeah. <clears throat> now I have a question for you. Yeah. Somebody who fears. Okay. So I know a lot of, a lot of people, um, like whenever this topic comes up, oftentimes people fall back to, um, well, what's like, if that's, if there's a, if there's a healthy fear of God, then there has to be a line that if you cross, you fall into an unhealthy fear. So the fear of being like the fear of going to hell, Mm -hmm. somebody, some people would say that, well, I'm just, I'm just scared to go to hell. So it, would that be considered like a healthy fear of the Lord? And if, in my opinion, like this is, this is where the question comes in. I would say, yeah, that would be a healthy fear because your your fear is of being separated from God for an eternity. However, yeah. if your fear is is losing out on treasures that you could receive in heaven, then that's where, it, like, it's kind of like I see it as like a almost like a selfishness. Yeah, but but what do you think? Yeah, you're actually, I think a lot of people who listen to this, may, maybe not a lot of people, but some people who listen to this and hear what you just said would be like, oh, no, that's not healthy. But you're right. You're 100% yes. right. <laughs> and the Bible actually talks about that. Jesus actually talks about that. Um, so it's in Matthew 10, 28. Um, it said, Jesus says, and do not fear those who kill the body, but not cannot uh, kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Hmm. So here we're talking that was about what, sorry? Matthew. This is uh, Matthew 10, 28. Okay. So I'm going to read it one more time. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. So what Jesus is saying is don't fear man. So a fear of man is not healthy um, because man can do nothing to you. Yeah, he can harm or or kill your physical body. Yeah. Um, but we also know where Paul says, um, I think it's in Philippians 2. Um, could be wrong, but I think it's in Philippians. He says um, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Mm-hmm. So um, Jesus is saying, don't be scared of the person who can kill your body, but instead fear God who can kill both your body and soul in hell. So the fear of hell is healthy. Contrary to what the American church believes today, um, I think for so long, um, like in the crusade era, um, it was fire and brimstone 
God's saving you from hell. And a lot of people came to repentance through that. Um, but then I think the Hillsong movement came out and probably the, the nineties is what started kind of, I call it the Hillsong movement where worship started getting like wild and fun. Um, and then churches slowly adopted this theme of, well, we need to be, um, more accepted in the eyes of the world. Um, and we water down our messages and, you know, hell has been talked about so much. Let's not talk about hell. Let's not talk about the fear of hell. Let's just talk about the goodness and the grace of God. And so we've actually, um, turned Jesus into a long flowing haired hippie, um, who says love is love and, um, doesn't, um, doesn't care about your sin. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's, that's not scary. Hippie. That's yeah, scary. that's that's very scary. And unfortunately, that's the state of a lot of the American church. I don't know if it's the same in Canada, but America does seem to set the standard for the rest of the world as far as um, teaching and church models go. Um, yeah, so, we follow y'all on that one. Yeah. And I it, feel like even in the in uh, in the book, Scary God, we've made mention of it like five or six times already. So it's I'll, drop, <laughs> I'll drop a link below where you can listen to it or buy it. Um Shout out Maddie Montgomery. But uh, yeah, like he said, like so often Jesus, like Jesus is a lion and he's being depicted as a house cat. You know, it's like yeah. we've softened it and it's, it, you can't like stop it. <laughs> yeah, know? yeah, for sure. And I think, so the fear, of the, the fear of the Lord is actually different for the believer and the non-believer. The non-believer can actually have a fear of the Lord um, without having a fear of the Lord that's um, like the belief. So let me explain this a little bit better. Mm -hmm. So um, the unbeliever, the fear of the Lord, um, they should be completely terrified of God because like I was saying before, and like you were just saying about the house cat and the lion, God is a lion. He's, He's very scary for someone who does not believe in him. The reason why is this right here where Jesus says that fear the one who can destroy both body and soul and hell. Um, We've made Jesus into this full of grace guy, which he is full of grace, but doesn't care about sin and loves everybody and doesn't care about your sin. And he's going to save everyone and hell doesn't exist or hell's just a temporary holding place or something like that. Just to make the message palatable for someone who doesn't believe. The problem is, is that that's not true and God doesn't change in the old Testament. If you read the stories in the old Testament, Mm -hmm. God was pretty darn scary, (laughs) even to the believers because they see what he's doing to all their enemies. Yeah. And that, that I feel like that builds a healthy fear. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Yeah. And there was, there was actually something she's gone. Just like that. Thoughts gone. All right. Your thoughts gone. Yeah. So had a good one. A, yeah. Being uh, seeing what God uh, does in the Old Testament to uh, his to those who aren't his people produces a healthy fear um, because you're like, oh, my goodness, um, the God that's that scary is actually on my side and he chooses to love me and show me grace and show me mercy. That's incredible. Um, but also when we only take the version of Jesus, that's very loving and full of grace. What we actually forget about is what Revelation, the book of Revelation says is Jesus also. Um, And the Jesus in the book of Revelation is a Jesus who's riding a horse with a robe dipped in blood, um, with fire in his eyes and a tongue like a sword and his hair is flowing like uh, white wool. Um, And he's got written on his thigh, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and he's coming uh, for vengeance (laughs) on the earth. So (laughs) that's a scary God. Um, so fear the Lord for the believer is like what we've described thus far throughout the episode for the unbeliever. Um, it is very scary. You do have a fear of the Lord because, um, he is the one who can destroy both your body and soul in hell. And you are in opposition to him and you will never win that, that battle. That's very scary. Mm -hmm. So, um, Mm -hmm. yeah, like, It's it's not easy to talk about because it's not a topic that's usually talked about in churches or in Christian circles right now um, because it is difficult, because people feel judged, people feel like you hate them. Um, but this is just what the Bible says, um, and it's important that we say this because people will die 
apart from relationship with Jesus, and they will go to hell. And the Bible says that um, God will destroy both body and soul in hell. Um, and that's very scary. Mm-hmm. Um, but when you are um, in Christ, the fear of the Lord that then is produced through that is a healthy fear where you understand that the God who is capable of doing those things to you, instead he chooses to love you and show you grace and forgive you and want to be your friend. That's yeah. incredible. That's incredible. Yeah. One thing I just touching on, um, yeah. on how we've softened, how we've kind of softened the message. Um, and then we'll hop off cause we hit our, we hit our mark here tonight. Yeah. Um, but I heard, I heard it said that when you're preaching, when you're, when you're giving the word, um, you have to make sure that you're not doing it in an offensive manner. Um, that came out super French, but you have to make sure you're not doing it like your, your speech isn't offensive because the gospel is offensive. Yeah. Yeah. And the reason good. the gospel, the gospel is so offensive is because it's something that we could never live up to. It's something we could never do on our own, mm-hmm. you know? So a lot of times people will try and soften the message to not offend people because they know the message could be, could be offensive, but it was written the way it was written for a reason, you know? It pricks the heart. Yeah. And so what, when you're changed as a person, you want to come off as soft. You want to come off as caring, sympathetic, empathetic, all those nice words, you know, mm-hmm. but that's because you're delivering a message that could so easily offend people because you can't live up to it. You can't do it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So with, without Jesus, it's, it's impossible. So, yeah. and that's why the Bible does say to, um, tell the truth in love, um, because the truth is convicting, um, it's harsh, um, it's offensive, but that's why we have to speak it in love um, mm-hmm. because the way that we speak it does make a difference in how it's received. Oh, yeah, yeah, it is offensive that you you are in opposition to God, that you've offended him, that he's going to you know punish you for what you've done. His enemy. That's offensive. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're his enemy. That's very offensive because this is my my body. I want to do with, with it what I want to. Um, I want to live my life the way that I want to. I'm comfortable sinning. I like it. How are you going to tell me? Yeah, exactly. How are you going to tell me that I'm doing something wrong and that God doesn't like me for it? (laughs) (laughs) Well, (laughs) then that's the beauty is you don't need to, I don't need to tell you. Exactly. It's right here, you know, it's right there. But, but it also has the, it's like, if you, you can't do that whole, you have to read before and after you can't take a certain portion and be like, Oh, look, God hates me. I'm his enemy. Game over for me. You know what I mean? Yeah. You have to get the before and after and understand that there is a way of, of being redeemed. Mm. Um, so that's why it's all in here. Absolutely. Yeah. You got to get the full story to know you can't just take a a part of it and say, well, I don't like God because of this. You need to know the whole story. God's mean. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Right. You really um, need a bigger picture for it. Yeah, for sure. Um, he's a complex God, and it's important that we um, try to understand him before we write him off. Because um, at one point, it'll be too late. Um, okay, yeah. well, that's a good way to end. <laughs> good, man. Uh, well, hey, I, I y'all will say can this, all be, though. Say what? Y'all can all be what? Y'all can all be saved. <laughs> yeah, y'all can all right. be saved. That's right. Um, we didn't talk about this yet. We did briefly, um, but I'm just going to say it now um, so that the listeners can hear it when it's played back on Friday. Um, so, Aaron, don't act too surprised because um, seriously, you're going to be like, what? we didn't really talk about this. Um, we oh. talked about it briefly. So we said that we, uh, we're going to start I having do the this- edit. I do the editing, so... If yeah, I don't like you, what you're about to say, yeah, you can, you can outro. Right. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. <laughs> right. So we're gonna have guests on the show, and um, I've been talking to one of the guests, and I, Aaron, I mentioned this to you like two weeks ago. What week I wanted to have him in, and it was after the Fear of the Lord episode. Mm-hmm. So while this one drops Friday, that means next week there's gonna be a guest. You good with that? I forgot to bring it up before the show started. <laughs> we'll just pause it for a second. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just pause no, it. Yeah. Cool. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, okay. 
Cool. So yeah. I'm just going to, I'm going to, um, should I, I'm just going to say who it is. Um, cause I, I do want to give him a little shout out. Um, because the people who know him are probably going to be excited. Cool. Um, cool. So his name is Mike Bateman. He's from Lebanon, Missouri. Um, he is, um, actually my brother-in-law's brother-in-law. Um, sorry, so, the, the city cut out when you said it, he's from where he's from Lebanon, Missouri. Okay. Yeah. He's my brother-in-law's brother-in-law. Mm-hmm. So he's family, even though that's hard to understand. He's my brother-in-law's brother-in-law. That's but, a stretch, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he's family. Not blood, but he's family. Um, he's an awesome guy. So he's going to be coming on next week to talk about a topic that I will not reveal right now. I'll let him bring it up next week. Um, but it's going to be let, really interesting. Let me know. Let me the, know the topic once we get off of here. That'd be well, helpful. I told you. I'll, I'll, <laughs> Throw I'll, me to the lions. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'll text it to you. No, I'm kidding. I remember it. Okay, cool. I'm memory of a goldfish, my friend. Oh, wait, I that's a bad thing. Yeah, that doesn't seem like a good thing. Seems elephant. Like a, yeah, elephant. Fine. Memory of an elephant. Okay, cool. That works. Yeah. So anyway, um, that wraps up um, the fear of the Lord. Um, this was... It probably helped with a little bit of understanding, but if you want more, I would check out Scary God, like we've said 14 million times throughout the episode. Um, yeah, we've got a guest next week, and that will probably be the last week of theology before we move on to something else. Well, yeah, so that's it. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe. Um, I already said I'll, I'll drop the link below for you guys to uh, check out Scary God. Mm-hmm. And that's it. That's it. Thanks, guys. All right. See you, bro. Peace, man. So there's the episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, don't forget to check out our Facebook page, our Instagram, and be super blessed. And it's gonna stay like that. I take pride in the what God got going. Slip, don't artists wake them up to a yawn. I run with a king, so this prince got a charm. If they tell you any difference, it will just a false alarm.